Special thanks to our media partners, Precision Optical Technologies, for sponsoring today's video. Precision Optical Technologies, optical networking redefined. And that's not Chuck math. I think that's actually like straight math. Math math. <laughs> I, agree. math, math. <laughs> I agree, but I'm not a mathematician. I'm just a silly musician. <laughs> I'm looking for the easy way around it. No, it, it makes sense though. Like a lot of this stuff, when you when you really start to think about the why, because again, we're talking about electrons traveling through a conductor, and anything that impedes the conductor's ability to transmit those electrons in both directions, and that bidirectionality is important because in almost all of our modern cable television systems, it's two-way plant. Now, granted, that's uh, separated by a diplex filter into a high side and a low side. But in the future, and as we think about DOCSIS 4 and potentially full duplex, now we're going to have upstream and downstream signals traveling through the same piece of cable at the same frequency. Hmm. So we start to think about the electrons flowing through that cable differently because now there's not a diplex filter involved. And, and a TDR is very similar, right? Because it transmits and receives on the same frequency. Yep. Just like F old duplex toxis does. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let me show a couple other waveforms real quick. So now everything that I just mentioned uh, so far, it has everything to do with any TDR, as long as you know what features it has, a TDR is still a TDR as far as that goes. But if I may, I do need to show some of the things that make it different when you choose one particular brand over the other. Do you mind? Not at all. Okay. I'm going to start with a simple one here. Last summer, during the middle of the summer, I was in Sherman, Texas. And it was in July. And I did a two-hour training session because they bought a bunch of my TDRs. And then afterwards, they said, hey, what are you doing after this class? And I thought, oh, how sweet. They want to take me out to lunch. I don't get that happen all the time. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't want to take me out to lunch. I, I missed that completely. They said, we've been having this trouble with this cable over here for quite some time. And we were wondering, would you like to come out and test it? And I'm like, honestly, I have nowhere to be until tomorrow. I live for this. Let's do it. Plus, it was only 105 degrees. So we go out there. <laughs> I'm like thinking you guys knew I was going to come here. How come we couldn't have done that part first? And then, you know what? I'm letting that go. I'm still working on that, letting that go. So we're testing near this MDU, at this MDU. We're not testing in. We're testing out right here. That's 500 cable. Yep. So we disconnect and we shoot this way. Now, without knowing too much about what was going on, let me paint a picture for you. While we're standing there, and let me see which one is these is which while we're standing there we're looking out across this yard between these apartment buildings there's a pedestal about 300 feet that way it goes across this yard just a few feet in front of me as a sprinkler system running perpendicular to my cable this way and there's a parking lot over on the other side before you get to that pedestal so we're going over this we're going under this long yard under a sprinkler system and at some point underneath a driveway so those are the facts bearing on it they had said that this had caused them a variety of problems. I don't remember exactly what the problem was, but let me show you the first thing we did when we got all tested. Bear with me here. Pen. Sherman. Here we go. So, again, this is just regular TDR shooting right here. I'm bringing the end of my cable onto the screen right here. This is the zoom window that I'm showing. This is my pedestal at 331 feet right over here. Now, as I mentioned, I have not yet begun to increase my vertical gain, even though you can clearly see that there's something going on right here. But before I do that, I'm working on the obvious right here. Go back to my zoom window right over here. This happens to be my jumper cable, just so you know. I know that because I shot this. As I get closer, I'm going to move my green cursor and just go in right here. I see two little blips right here. And I got a group. I think there must have been about seven guys waiting on me to see what I could find. And the very first thing that I say is, now this is really interesting. Am I supposed to have something right at four feet? And they say to me, do you see something at four feet? And I say, who's asking the questions here? I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but I got to be honest with you. 
I didn't think this was going to be this easy because near as I can tell from where we're standing at this building, four feet is right about here. And you guys said that you looked at this before. Did you look right about here? So I said, excuse me for being a smart aleck. Yeah, I do see something at about four feet. I also see something at about 10 feet. So they said, well, let's get out the shovel and dig it up. I'm like, why not? It's only 108 degrees. So we pull out the shovel. And sure enough, just as I had mentioned before, right in that first turn in the cable right here, we pull it out. You see this crack right there. That is what this is right here. This was easy to find. So they're like, wow, that was pretty simple. Now, I'm you don't got to be a scientist to figure out what's going on here. Just know a little bit about TDR knowledge. You see what pulse width they have this shot in right here? That's a two nanosecond pulse width. Can you see how if I accidentally or if I didn't know anything about pulse widths, if I were looking at a 50 nanosecond pulse width or even a 25 nanosecond pulse width, I may have easily shot over something just four feet in front of me. Yeah. This was easy to find. So they said, well, let's dig up the other one. Where did you see that is? Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. Pardon me for a second here. Well, I think the, the launch cable probably helped there too, right? It could. It very well could. By the way, this should be an 88 VOP, I believe. Minor detail at this point, but the truth is this would have been at about 4.3 feet, and then the second one was at 9 feet. Okay. Now, by the way, between that 4 and 9 feet, that crossed over where that sprinkler system was, just so you know, just to give you a little, we call that foreshadowing. <laughs> so by the time we dig up this other hole, and again, what do we care? It's only 110 degrees. So we go over there. Truth be told, we didn't see anything right away. We had to end up digging this hole a little bit, a little bit wider than this. But we're only about three feet deep at this point. This was not that difficult. So sure enough, we ran into a splice right there. Now, at first glance, it didn't look like there was anything wrong with it. We went ahead and cut it open. Nice little white powdery on the inside. Both of those things were very simple to find. Now, again, I told them why they missed that. They didn't realize about the pulse width. Now, the great thing about our track review software Mike, and I know you've played with this. We have two versions. We have the one you can use on the computer as well as the one you can use on the phone. They both work the same way, but at least when I'm using the one on the uh, phone, one of the advantages to this is that I can do multiple waveforms at one time. So I could shoot something last December and see what it looks like now. Or in this case, this is what it looked like before. And after we fixed it, we put it together here. But before we shot it again, and they put it all back together and said, hey, this was a great day. And they put it all back together. I'm like, whoa, whoa, did you put that back together already? Like, did you want to shoot it again? I'm like, yeah, it's not too much trouble. So we did shoot it again. And I quickly wrote a report for him that night so that he can see this is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after we fixed it. Now, I don't know what this was over here. I think it was just a block splice. They didn't say it was causing them any problems. But this is something I thought that they should have done when you have time the next time you're out here. I would love for you to shoot it back this way and shoot it the other way just as long as you're there. Now, let me show you something else as well. Let me get rid of that overlay file. This is something I need people to understand about vertical gain. When I said there's a point where it's too little versus there's a point where it's too much, this obviously just confuses matters, right? And many times people will wonder, well, what about all of this stuff right here? You guys, we are looking at this under a very high powered microscope. It is very possible that all of this stuff is just nothing. And when I say the vertical gain is up to you, whatever you want to put it at, this is as high as we need to question this and is as high as we need to identify whether this is a problem or not. Anything over here just confuses the issue. And please don't be that person that says to me, I just replaced the whole thing. Well, of course you'd replace the whole thing. It's not your money. But if you want to be the technician that is the guy that they want to depend on, man or woman, excuse me for saying that, then I understand these little details right here. This is just too much information. This confuses the issue. Honestly, this is probably nothing. Honestly, this is probably nothing. But once we have determined the most obvious problem, start there, work your way through. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let me show you another one very similarly. This is, do I really want to close it? This is the detail that why so many people are going towards Springbok. And as far as I'm concerned, we've got the app, which is wonderful. I love it. It's a game changer, the fact that it's touchscreen. The TDR is great. Lots of great TDRs are out there. 
let me tell you what I feel is the game changer on this particular TDR and why I think you'll want to use it. When it comes to storing waveforms, there's one thing that I want to point out to you. Now that we have a little bit of understanding about the output pulses and how it's got a maximum distance, your TDR, whichever you're using, is going to have a variety of any of these pulse widths. That chart that I showed you, and I'm more than happy to share it with people, I don't want you to worry about memorizing it, but the best part about that chart, as far as blind spots and distances goes, I just want you to keep this in mind. Most TDR starts somewhere between a one and a five nanosecond pulse width. They go about 1,000 to 1,500 feet. They have a blind spot of about two to six feet, and then it just goes up from there. That's all I want you to understand or memorize about that. But here's the deal. If you don't want to waste truck rolls, if you want to spend less time, if you want to dig fewer holes, use this as a guideline, 1,000 feet. If you're shooting a cable that is over 1,000 feet, I'm going to want you to take at least two pictures of it from each side, one in a short pulse width, sub one, two, five, whatever, and then in a longer pulse width, 20 or 50 nanosecond. So you have all your small details up close and you have your distance further down. Now that's going to be two shots from this side, perhaps two distance from the other side. That's going to be four waveform bins. The game changer on the Springbok TDRs is it's the only metallic TDR manufacturer on the market now that stores all of your wave, your output pulses at one time. Let me tell you why that's key. I'm at a trade show two years ago. One of my customers calls me from the field and he says, Chuck, do you have time to help me? I'm like, talk to me, what do you got? He says, well, I got this aerial cable that I'm shooting and it's noisy as heck and I cannot figure out why because I got nothing connected at all. I got no AC, I got no RF, but it's noisy. Now understand, I've not yet begun to analyze this cable, right? So let me show you what he's looking at. When I turn my vertical gain up a little bit higher, a couple things you notice. This noise floor is very noisy, right? If there's anything smaller inside of here, we're just not going to be able to see it. We're not going to have a chance to get into filters now. This is more of a 201 level here. But picture this. If we start to apply some of our filters and quiet down that noise floor, maybe if there's something hiding in this muck, we might be able to get it to jump up. Excuse me, pull, jump out. He's got my filter set at 16 here, which means with the filter all the way up at 16, it'll still go a lot bit higher. He still can't see anything on here. So he's wondering, why is this so noisy? So I ask him, give me an idea of what it is you think you're looking for. He says, well, I probably got squirrel chews and water in the cable. And I said, well, there's the first answer to your question. The mere fact that you have an aerial cable just sitting up there, it's an antenna, okay? If you think you got cracks in your shield, it's just letting stuff in. That's why it's so noisy. So first things first, let me analyze this. The first thing that I always like to do, and we have auto search features, but I don't like to rely on auto search. The reason why I don't like to rely on auto search is because people get stuck thinking if the TDR couldn't find it, it's not there. Now, if the TDR couldn't find it, I want you to go behind the scenes and figure it out yourself. So this is what I like to do. The first thing I want to do is bring the end of my cable on the, on the screen first so that I can look at maximum zoomage. Now, you recognize the signature, Mike? Uh, no, Chuck, what is that signature? That is an LE, and LE almost always looks that way. So can a TDR see through an LE? No. No, so we know that that's the end of my cable. So at 1,500 feet, I see the end of my cable on the screen right here. Now I'm going to start to analyze it by going over to my vertical gain. And keep in mind, it doesn't matter whether you're live or you're looking at a stored waveform or an uploaded waveform. But keep in mind, this is what he did. He stored it. It took him just a few seconds. And then he Bluetoothed it to his, his phone. And then he emailed it to me. We are having a conversation while we're looking at this. He got it back connected. He was only down for maybe just a couple of minutes. Now he and I are analyzing this. So as I slowly, just slowly start to increase my vertical gain, what do you see jump clearly out? Mike, please, you tell me. Yeah, I, I do see uh, an event uh, somewhere around 400 and probably 50 feet or so, and possibly another one just before. Yeah, looks like there's a couple of different events that start to appear here.